Hello, I'm Julia Cordova. Thank you so much for subscribing to my YouTube channel and liking my videos. I really appreciate it. So last week we had an up week for the markets, but we closed the week right at resistance. So what's going to happen this week? I could make both a bull and a bear case based on what the charts say. So I'll show you on each of the individual charts what I mean by that. But I am leaning ever so slightly bullish because of some bullish divergence on ES and because we closed above the 9MAs in both NQ and small caps RTY. However, if we are in fact in bear flags in all of them, I think there's a, a lot of room to the downside. So I'll show you where I will flip that bias. I'll show you where I will potentially take the long trades in each of them. And so it could go either way, but I'm leaning slightly bullish. As far as commodities go for oil, last week, I thought oil actually looked the best based on the weekly chart. I thought that it looked like a buy the effing dip if we get one, but I also thought that it potentially might close higher than the week before. On Monday slash Tuesday, oil careened down. It went down as much as 12%. However, it came back up before the end of the week and it closed the week only uh, down 3% from the week before. 3% is a lot, but it came back 9% out of the 12 that it went down. So this week I'm leaning bullish yet again. However, I had taken off one martini last week because it had closed slightly below my key, which means it wasn't of the highest confidence. And this week I'm sort of keeping it at that level because it hasn't yet proven to me, although it looks good, it hasn't yet proven to me that it's high confidence. As far as the metals go, last week I decided to sort of go against the trend and have a bullish bias. And again, um, gold and silver closed the week down, so did miners, but miners got the bounce exactly where it needed to. Mm, but it's still not bullish looking at all. And I'm really, even though I'm in a long trade right now, I'm going to need to cut it if it doesn't start perking up this next week. So with that said, let me show you on each of the charts what's going on. And if you are a subscriber to my Substack, you have them in front of you and you can sort of take notes as I go along. You ready? All right, let's talk charts. Whoop. Okay, so let's start off by looking at the ES weekly chart here. So you can see what I mean about it potentially being a bear flag. This was Memorial Day weekend. This high was outside of US hours and it just careened down after that. And then it's gone and it closed the week still underneath my key level here, which is an ascending orange line. It's 3917.75 this week above. I'm going to be leaning bullish below it's still bearish so if you do take a trade down here that's bullish you just have to watch your size right that's that's how i think of this of course you want to get low entry but it's higher risk down here as opposed to here okay so there's a lot of room in between here and what i would like to have happen because of this uh, bullish divergence i would like the opportunity to buy somewhere in this area um, but potentially not all the way down here. If, in fact, if price action gets all the way down here to this 3756.75, that's going to be a super high risk long. It's going to be, I think, one of the very last places it could uh, be a good long from there. So um, I'm going to be looking to the lower time frames to try and find entry. I'll show you the hourly chart just at the very end of um, my presentation. But uh, yeah, so. Uh, I'd like a dip early in the week so that I'll have a lower risk, uh, you know, stop out, if you will. Um, or if it can prove itself above 3917.75, yay. And uh, you can see that we're below the nine here, even with the bullish divergence. Okay, so now let's look at, um, actually, I'll show you the daily ES chart. Because what I've been doing um, when I'm streaming on Twitch is I've been actually showing you the hourly chart, but then I'll show you the daily and the weekly pivots on top of the hourly charts so we can use those as well. So for this week, you can see that we're actually above the 9MA and the 20MA in terms of this daily chart, but we have so far what looks like a lower high and then higher lows. 
So I'll just be watching 3926.75 to the upside, potentially if it hits Sunday night slash Monday, uh, see if it might be a good short. I'm not sure yet. Um, or if it comes down here to this 3836.50, that would be support on the daily. Uh, so let's look at NQ. This is the weekly chart. You can see the same sort of phenomenon uh, down from Memorial Day weekend. And then now uh, it, it did close above my pink line here, but still below this orange line. However, unlike ES, it is above the 9MA. So it's sort of, it doesn't have the bullish divergence, but it's above the 9MA. And it really could go either way. So as far as a good risk reward, reward long goes, um, the first level I have on the weekly is 12068.25. Um, however, I'll show you the weekly at the end, just like uh, with uh, ES. Now, it it could come down here to 11852.25. And for me, if you sort of squint your eyes, you can see there's a lot of uh, candles ending here. There's a lot of wicks that come down here. So this sort of, to me, it would be a good risk reward trade uh, this week is taking that 11.852.25. And the earlier it can get there, the better, in my opinion, because then I think it'll have the most chance of snapping back. Whereas if it goes up first and comes down, then of course it's got less of a chance of snapping back. Ah. Now let's look at the daily for NQ. And you can see that um, it's it's really looking pretty good. It's above the nine, it's above the twenty, but it back tested the fifty on Friday and left us with that dragonfly uh, doji, which could be sort of a setting sun or evening star formation. So uh, we'll have to watch one, two, six, three um, imme as immediate resistance on the daily, and as what I have is sort of my daily key line above bullish below still technically bearish so watch size and these have been working pretty well for me um on the upside one two three nine six point two five is sort of resistance on the daily all right let's look at small caps rty so same thing same same uh but not above the 9MA as of yet, no bullish divergence. So uh, for me, the weekly key above which bullish below bearish is 1793.3. Um, now, this could potentially be a bear flag. So if it gets below 1715 or so, that would not, I think, bode well. I think it would be just too many wicks in this area and it would potentially come down here and then below 1682, I think would be very bearish um, short term at least. So that's what I'm thinking for there. Okay, let me look at the daily. Okie dokie. So this is my daily chart and you can see we are above the key. We're above the 20 MA, we're above the 9 MA, but still below the 50 MA as far as the key goes, or as far as the daily chart goes. Now this could potentially be an ascending triangle, but it's not there yet. It still looks more like a pennant. So we'll see how it behaves if it can get above this uh, 1794 area, which happens to be pretty much my weekly key as well. So basically, if it can get above this, uh, what could be an ascending triangle, bullish, but still not bullish below that, um, at least a longer term. So I would like to be able to buy the dip at the 1730.5 area because I think that would be the sort of the best uh, risk reward, if you will. But uh, we'll see when or if we get there, but I will be live streaming on Twitch so you can see what I'll think there live. Let's look at Bitcoin. Okay, so uh, Bitcoin broke out last week from my pink line. And just like I said, it would pretty much went to this orange line and then turned around. So um for this week it's got to get back above that orange line which is 22360.4 on sunday night slash monday um and really just hold this higher low that it's set so i don't have a lot of action going here but it is not bullish yet and would not be bullish until it can get above the orange line and then confirm that above 24295.6 
above this 24295.6, I think it would potentially squeeze all the way to 29130.8. But it's really just consolidation here and uh, sort of flipping between lines. Now I could add, oops, add another pink line here and put this level, but I just, I'm not there yet. And in my analyses, I just, I'm going to wait a little bit. All right, let's look at Ethereum. Okay, so Ethereum is holding my green line here. Um, it, it support, I have at 1131.97 for Sunday night slash Monday. Now it is potentially making an ascending triangle. So if it gets above this wick, um, these wicks of 1280 or so, then I think it's bullish and will probably break out above this pink line and then all the way up here. So let me go ahead and uh, something there. So maybe even the 1989 area, depending on where it hits. But um, first it would have to get above 1280 or so. If it comes down below this uh, green line, then it, especially if it closes there, it is bearish and potentially all the way down to 596.55. Okay, now let's look at miners. Okay, okay, okay. I know this looks complicated, but let me just tell you what I did last week. So I did not have these orange lines in at the beginning of last week, but what was happening is as we were sort of pooping last week, I, I was like, you know, um, the next support I have was really in the scap area, and I thought, you know, if it comes down here and closes inside of the scap and bounces, it's just, it's just, it, no. I just thought it's got to have something before then, because it just looked to me like it, it was just so dire looking, I'll say that. Not that it won't keep going down, but it was just so dire looking that I was like, it's got to bounce. So I connected the top of these two wigs. And then I sort of moved this slope down to where I thought it made sense, which of course would be this previous high. And that actually connected up with the bottom of this candle. And then I sort of uh, looked at the 26 area as an area to buy. And so I scalped long miners there and I added to my metals position there. I don't know if it was a bright move or not, but I will very easily um, be happy to stop out just below the lows from last week on those. But that's what I did for last week in terms of miners. And for this week, 2601 is the bottom of this line. But uh, if it gets there, I don't know that that would be a bullish sign. I don't, I think it would be actually quite bearish. And then at least it will go down though to uh, midway into this gap. If it fills this gap, then you can be sure that every that it, that you should sell on pops because I think it will go lower if it fills this gap, potentially all the way down here. So uh, this is uh, a time to take uh, risks if you believe in the long term uh, bullishness of metals and miners, but realizing that it can certainly go lower before it goes higher. So let's look at gold, a much less bullish looking candle than miners. Um, and it broke down further from this pink line. Once it broke down uh, in the week before last, it just really uh, let loose last week, so to speak. So for this week, I have sort of a double area here of 1772.8. That, that is the very important level for gold bulls to watch above Above that, it's going to have a much better chance, I think, of bouncing than if it can't break above that. So uh, as far as scalps go, um, if you wanted to, as I did, take the uh, scalp here with uh, stops right below the lows and uh, then sort of take partial profit at this 1772.8 um, area, that would be one way to play it or a safer way would actually be to wait until it gets back above and confirms and then sort of set the stop somewhere down here after it started closing hourly and confirming above this 1772.8. Um, from a downside perspective, if you are short or if you are looking at uh, sort of where the bleeding might stop, if it continues bleeding, I see 1690.1 as the next level of support. Um, and where did I get that? I will show you. 
I connected the bottom of this wick here to the same slope that I've been using, same pink slope, and that to me, that bottom of that wick is now um, sort of support for gold at 1690.1. And uh, it's not though technically bullish until it can get above 1812.5, which I think uh, depending on the price action this week could potentially uh, align with the 9MA. But that's sort of the levels that I'm watching for gold. Let's look at silver. Okay. So I had talked about this potentially being a giant bull flag. And uh, if it and it's still within the realm of possibility there. But what I don't like that happened before is it's okay to close outside of it if we can zip back up the next week, right? We've never been outside of this channel for longer than one week before returning into it except for last week when it came out here and it closed slightly lower week over week. However, a long time ago, uh, back when I was doing charts on a different program, I had an inverse head and shoulders drawn in here and this was uh, the neckline for that head and shoulders. So it does have some support here at the 18.895 area. So if it's able to close back inside of this channel this week at 20.165, then potentially it's very short term bullish for a bounce. I think that would be a really good sign, not for this week, but next if it closed above 20.165. So that's sort of the uh, more high confidence trade, if you will, is to wait until it's gotten back above here or until it's potentially reached this lower 17.495 area. Although it is on support this week at that black uh, RSI support, I'm just under it, but still, in my opinion, on it. So uh, let's look at oil. Okay, oil looks better than the metals do, to me anyway. Um, you can see that it did uh, sort of lose the 20 MA that it had last week, but this is a good looking wick. Uh, generally speaking, um, by the way, look at the size of these candles, huge volatility in oil. I mean, really there's, there's, uh, it's kind of impressive. But anyway, um, if you see a wick this size, usually it's a good sign for the next week. It doesn't necessarily mean that we'll close higher, but it does mean that uh, potentially dips are getting bought. And if you look at XOP, same deal here. You can see it bounced right off the bottom of the channel. And I like that for a number of reasons. I like it because first of all, it respected my channel. Good job. Secondly, it was in the middle of this previous gap and there's always support there as I've talked about. Yay. And then thirdly, it, if, if ever you see something just exactly test an MA and then perfectly bounce from it, it's generally a warning sign that potentially it may not hold in the future, at least these lower MAs. A 9MA might be slightly different like here, but if it's back testing these uh, 20 and 50 MAs, it will either just miss it, right? Or it will potentially go right through it. And that's what happened this time is it went right through it and then bounced and then closed back above this purple line. So, oops, uh, I hate when it does. Okay, so for this week, um, I have support here for XOP at 114.89. And then the bottom of the channel is 109.07. I did uh, hugely add to my XOP long position last week here. So uh, ended up being in the green because of how I played that. Just thinking to myself, self, it's got a huge, I've got a huge opportunity here to buy the effing dip and then, st or stop out just right under here if it doesn't work out for me. And so, Yay, that worked out. But for this week, uh, potentially you could buy a dip at 114.89 with a stop just uh, a, like a, a little bit under this uh, 50 MA here. And then if it continues forward moving progress, I've got some resistance at 128.72, although there is an unfilled uh, or filled now gap area between 125 and 126. So that's sort of an area to watch as uh, interim resistance. It will be bullish, I think, if it could manage to close above 128.72. Really, really bullish if it can do that. Um, 
And then as far as oil goes, I don't, you know, there's a bug in trading view where it moves these uh, markers. I don't know why, but anyway, if it can get above 110.34, bullish. That would also be, I think, above the uh, 9 MA as well, if it can do that. Um, but big picture, we've got some immediate resistance at 105.88. So um, as far as scalping the futures go, I'm going to be a little more cautious this week and just wait um, until it gets above this 105.88 before I take the long scalp and I'm going to watch the smaller time frames in to make sure that that is holding. If it is, I think that's a really good uh, position to take. So that's what I'm going to do. Now let's look at Natty. All right. Okay. So I didn't. Natty's so crazy. And all I said last week is basically it's super crazy, super volatile. And I just think it'll close the week up. And it did close the week up of all things to behave itself. But it was interesting because remember how we talked about uh, usually perfect bounces don't happen? Natty came back and was like, uh -huh, see, Julia knows crazy and I'm crazy. So it did come back and come down. Now, to me, this still looks uh, like it could potentially have more upside, but it's natty, so I really don't know. And, I, you know, you have to just be very careful when you're dealing with natural gas, but uh, it has a resistance here at 6.369. It has support at 5.477, and I'm going to say if it hits 5 0.477 that's probably the last place i would attempt long before way down here at about 507 or potentially lower at this daily 4.52 there's still an open gap way down here but i do think that we're probably going to have some more upside this week so these are the pivots that i'm going to watch now as far as bonds go okay so um if you're watching me live trade on Twitch, you saw me buy the effing dip when it got to here. Uh, and then I took some profit at right about this level. And then it got higher last week. At first, I was like, oh no, I took profit too soon. But then it came back down and made me feel good about myself. <laughs> like, you know how that works. You're like, oh no, but then it worked out. So what I would like to do is I would like to buy uh, TLT um, or the uh, 3X and probably just TLT actually back when we get to about this red line or so. I'm not sure. For me, it's either going to not quite hit this red line or it's going to go slightly below. I think it has higher odds of not actually hitting this line, believe it or not. Um, so I'm going to take a cautious long, probably right in this uh, 135 point, uh, I don't know what that is, apostrophe, I don't know. Uh, yeah, so right in this area here, this 135 point, you know, uh, point, what, well, sorry, 136 area. I'm just going to say that, the 136 area. I'm going to leave it like that. So I'm going to try there, uh, small and probably not leverage, and then go from there. So uh, that's it. Oh, let me show you my hourly chart. Okay, so what I've been doing, I don't know if you guys do this as well, I do this, is when I have a smaller time frame chart, I put as horizontal levels what my daily and weekly pivots are so I can keep them in mind and I don't sort of go off the reservation when I'm just, you know, when you're zoomed in too far and you're thinking, oh, wow, that's good or that's bad. So um, for this week, you can see that we closed right under this weekly resistance or under the daily and we're right at hourly as well, um, which for uh, the opening hour here is... Uh, 3911.75. So we'll see whether or not this uh, previous weekly gap at 3896.5 can hold. If not, uh, potentially I'm going to see whether or not this is low enough for me to buy the dip if it gets anywhere along this purple line. And then for NASDAQ, um, we're just a titch below the daily as you can see, but I'll be watching these levels to see whether or not if we go above, if we hold, or if we break below, if potentially um, that would be a buying opportunity. So I would like it to come down a little bit this week before up so I can take a lower risk uh, long there. So, but that's how I think about that. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. I'll make myself big. Thank you so much for subscribing to my YouTube channel and liking my videos. I really appreciate it. I hope you have a great week and I will see you on the interwebs. Okay, bye.